Welcome to lesson number two. This is uh, Sichama Jacob. Please, I'm asking you to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not done so. And remember to share and also leave a comment in the comment section. This is lesson number two under Circle Theorem. So if you did not watch lesson number one, please try to do so. This is lesson number two. So in lesson number two, we will talk about uh, these four properties you need to know when it comes to circle theorem. And please remember to watch lesson number three, where we talk about the remaining four properties of a circle theorem. In total, there are eight properties that you need to know in order for you to be able to answer any exam question. So the first property, it's uh, very simple and it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's there in most exam questions they ask you and it will just cost you or it will just give you a mark. So the first property is the same segment to the circumference. Okay, what do, I, what do I mean? So what it means, it means when you've got uh, angles that are coming from the same segment, okay, and they touch the circumference, they are equal to each other. You don't need to do any calculation there. You just copy that angle I mean, just write that angle. That's your answer. Let me let me make you understand what I'm talking about. So let's say we talked about the the segment in uh, lesson number one. So please click in the link in the description. There's a link which can take you to lesson number one if you did not watch, so that you follow the order. I mean, you follow all the lessons from the beginning. So this is lesson number two. We talked about the segment. This is a segment. So the segment. From here all the way, there is an angle at D. You see this angle at D? It's coming from the same segment. So the angle at D will be equal to the angle at C because they are coming from the same segment. The same applies to the angle at B. The angle at B will be equal. So all these will be equal. If this is 40 degrees, this also is 40 degrees. It's 40 degrees. So that's it. That's it. Okay. Now look at this. Let's say the angle here is 50 degrees, okay? And uh, you enter an exam. You find an examiner wants you to find this angle. This angle here. Can you see this angle? We shall call this as angle X. So what can you do? What is the angle here? The angle right here will be a 50 degrees because look, this is a, the chord and this is a segment. So this angle is coming from here to A and then it goes to D. And then this one from here goes to B and then goes back to D. So this angle will be equal to this angle using property number one. So that's it. All right. So we are now on property number two. You can see this is property number two, which says same segment to the center and circumference. Okay. I'm shortening these properties. Or what I want is for you to understand. So what it means, you can see we've got this segment right over here. This is segment, and there is a an angle which is formed at the center. Okay, for as long as this angle is coming from uh, the same segment as uh, the angle at B here, this angle will be twice this angle. And when we say it will be twice the angle which is here, it means times two. Look at this. So if this is 40 degrees, for argument's sake, what will be the angle at X? The angle at X will be 80 degrees. So we just say twice, that will be angle at X will be equal to 40 degrees times a 2, which will give us 80 degrees, like this, okay? So you need to remember this. Now, what if you are given an angle here? Look at this. They say this is 100 and, um, sorry, let me, let, me, let me just say this is 100 degrees, 100 degrees. What will be the angle at Y? So the angle at Y using property number two will simply be equal to uh, 100 degrees divided by two, which will give us a 50 degrees. So this angle here is a, uh, for, you, for it to be found, you need to divide the angle which is here by 2. But for you to find the angle here when given this angle, you just multiply by 2. Since they are saying it's twice at the center, 
Okay, so that's it. All right, so property number three says that when you've got a triangle inside the semicircle, the angle right over here, it's a 90, 90 degrees. You don't need to calculate here. Just look at that angle. The angle at B will always be a 90 degrees. Now listen to this. Can you see this is a center O? If you've got a diameter and there is a triangle which has been formed inside the semicircle, at whichever point that triangle is touching the circumference, it will be a 90 degrees. The same, look at this. If I do this, the angle here will also be a 90. If I do this, look at this. The angle right here will be a 90. No need of calculating, just check. Is that line passing through the center? Yes, it is passing through the center. Is it touching the circumference? Yes. At whichever point it touches the circumference, it's see 90 degrees. Let's go to property number four and see what we need to do on property number four. All right, so property number four, it's called cyclic quadrilateral. So I just said opposite angle so that you can understand what it talks about. So you can see, We've got a cyclic quadrilateral inside the circle. When you've got that cyclic quadrilateral, which is touching four parts of the circle, one, two, three, four. Know that the angle which is right here is opposite to this angle. And when you add these two angles, they must give you 180 degrees. Okay, so let's say this is a, a 40 degrees. What will be the angle at X? Angle at X will be equal to um it will be equal to 140 degrees because we know that if this is 140 degrees we add the 40 we'll get a 180 and this is what the property says it says that when you add these two angles you must get a 180. the same applies to this this and this they are opposite angles when you add them up they must give you 180 degrees thank you so much for watching this video please remember to share subscribe this has been sichamba jacob and please if you did not watch lesson one click on the link in the description below it will take you to where the video is and be ready for lesson number three where we'll finish up with the properties under circle theorem we're remaining with how many four properties to know before we start answering exam questions on uh, Seco theory. Thank you. Bye-bye.